Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, the one and only Master Propaganda Heroes like Defender of the Fatherland off here to a Wami Bon on Twin Beaches. In the south, we have a Jibba fighting for the German army, Deutschland. Here for the 90th Panzer Grenadier Division, first Panzer Grenadier Company North, it is Rickley fighting here for America, freedom, democracy. Here with the 45th Infantry straight into armoured with Assault Engineers as the focus. Brav scored out here though, no jeeps here. And we got there, no battle group yet for Jibba, we got a double bike opening. Again. Fancy that. So off to the races here, we are as always, big hearty thanks to my patron sports, continued handsome, generous and absolutely amazing support, continues to make the propaganda cast possible, and a big hearty thanks to keep commenting and liking my videos, helps out immensely with the YouTube algorithms, which otherwise would like to bury me. Head down. So, bikes rushing through the south here, the German army early in the war relied heavily on bikes, even had entire bike battalions, those the warm and dawn bikes, which I would say became more and more relegated to other purposes, obviously a bit of reconnaissance, but you know, more realigned support stuff there. Fun fact. And Ralph Scott moving out here for Rickley. Second Ralph Scott there as well. Armour with Assault Engineers. And again, just no pick yet here for Jibba. Got the bike there moving forwards. South side, the second bike route points. So very aggressive start here from Jibba, though. Lots of bikes. And there you go. First engagement here. Bike here spotting at the Ralph Scott here. Quickly falling back with the bike. Straight up to the field point. The Red Army, though, would actually continue to use large your bike formations throughout the war. It even had, like, you know, bikes towing mortars behind them. They would also be large relying on American bikes, like Harley Davidson bikes, for example. Bet you didn't think about that, communists riding Harley Davidsons, eh? Yeah. Well, the propaganda castle here, propaganda castle is here to enlighten you. Bike there, basically, ground the point here as well. Straight into the light support company and an assault grenade rush here from Jibba. Seems like that's becoming a possible new build there, appearing from deck players. Just double bikes and then fast assault grenadiers. Just kind of skipping out on the early units, which could be indicative they have a bit of an issue there again with the deck early game. Up north here, bike around the point here. Ralph's or Scout's busy here, Panzer Pioneer busy. A grenade on there for Rickley to try and cause county here Jibba's bike play and probably also the light vehicles. Slip here by Jibba though. Definitely push his bike too far on the bike. Thus got pushed all across the sands here. North here, Panzer Pioneer is the Scout's back, falling back. Assault goes moving forwards. Rickley there on the southern points. We've got a second assault going scored here for Jibba and Germany. We've got MP40s galore there. Panzer Pioneer, the busy. Ralph's got pushing with the fuel point. And there you go, got the cutoff point. And so Jibba finds himself resource wise here in the early game. Definitely a bit of a tough spot for now. Again, we'll probably see what he's going to try and do this. There you go, back rushing in. Intending to try and block right from here and allow the soldiers to close in. Though, of course, he wasn't expecting early grenades here. And thus the bike goes down. There's two bikes down here for Jibba in the early game. Like the first one was definitely like, you know, I think just a very avoidable loss. Second one, I suppose, was more calculated, but obviously the calculations weren't in Jibba's favor. So, bit of a rough start here. Rickley so far, two bikes down. Worth noting me, Mother. There's actually yet to be a single infantry casualty so far. Okay, just to say that it happens, but that's like pretty random. on this. Grenades off here. Rough squad here holding off quite well against superior German numbers, but I finally forced back. Grab the cutoff point here. What will Jibba do next, I wonder? I mean, this is uh, definitely very new ground in that sense, in terms of, like, deck metagaming, then. Infant support center. Third assault gun is called over for Jibba. Yowza. At this rate, though, he's going to have to, like, push for some kind of, like, you know, Italian armored support, I think, for this to really work. Like, I could see maybe combined arms of the M1340s, some of Entis, or, of course, Italian infantry and the L640s, which did get nerfed. But still could provide Gibber with some kind of like armored support full of his assault troops. But yeah, that's a pretty assault heavy build here. Smoke grenade here, I imagine. Yup. Sharp play there. Buys him a bit more time. But resource wise, Gibber is definitely behind on the curve here compared to Rickley. Very far behind. Southside assault was last scored here. Closing in MP40 so was Emma Grants and one Thompson. And there goes Salt Gun, he's being pushed back. Fire support elements for Jibba. Might be going here for flat feeling then. Or preparing for pack 38s and whatnot. We got the infant support center there right around the corner. Panzer Pioneer there busy as well. MG34 here for Jibba instead of the fire support elements. 
of realizing he does need some firepower there for Zola Rigler's infantry. Panzer Pioneer behind the wreckage of the old overturned bike. Smoke down here, allowing the assault is closing. Very good play there by Jibber. In this case, we also see Rikli pulls back, obviously expecting the assault is to close in. Jibber doesn't do that. Probably, again, anticipating that Rikli is anticipating he would try and do that. Instead, we got the assault gun is hiding out here. Like, I think what he's trying is to try and make you think the assault gun just, you know, went away and then bait them onto the point, then close in. This is pretty cheeky, but requires a bit of patience there. But if Jibber does have the patience, this could work out for him. There you go. But there you go. Rikli, of course, perhaps not anticipating, but other inadvertently kind of did. So, you know, doesn't close in here, but instead stays a distance. So, a lot of back and forth here. A lot of mind games. You got BARs on the way there for Rikli to sponsor the Assault Grenadiers. Could also be a reason he went for these Assault Grenadiers to try and force a bar response, delaying any Greyhounds. And there you go. Got the bars up. Of course, Gibber will then need some, you know, light vehicles to help push back against this. Again, we could see Italian infantry with the L640s. He could also go for flak feelings. He'll go for like any number of things. We'll have to see. Sounds hard to with some of our here. Grenades are hit all over the place here. Massive explosions, men dying, limbs being torn out of their sockets. Ralph's got their force back. Assault news closing in with the grease guns. Got a mort here for Rigley. Gibber, meanwhile, continues to play his cards close here. Still not picking a battle group. We're still not seeing much in terms of tech there either. Captain holding up here inside the house with his light machine gun team there. Sword of is moving in in the Sword Grenadiers. MP4 is his grease guns. Sword of there taking a lot of damage but they force back. And we got the Panzergas there on the way for Jibber. Obviously at some point anticipating light vehicles out of Rikli. Where's now going for the motor pool? Oh he cancels it. Tortoise it in the Panzerga Gruppe there. But still, we haven't seen much in terms of fuel usage there from Jebba. This is, in fact, sort of his first larger vehicle, light vehicle that isn't a bike. <laughs> smoke in the plot. we got Mortify there, of course, making it obvious where the assault gun is going to stand here. But there you go. Pony smoke bit into the smoke. It just withdraws because, also, just to briefly explain, this also means, you know, he can't fire back at the retreating troops without having to exit in there. So there's a slight bit of, you know, smart play there by Jebba. Thumbs up. Panzer being forced there with that car 90 case and their Panzerbüchse, which basically means armored rifle, very roughly translated, just translated to tank rifle. There we go. Scouts are taking a lot of damage. Half taken all seal up the two assault grenadier squads, which I imagine is also what he wants there going, obviously. But Jiva strategy remains a bit opaque here. Definitely not entirely sure. What the idea is here. Grenades here, right to all the bunch of German infantry. Nice grenade there. And now we got two assault gunners scored. See, half to move it closer. There you go. Grenade assault here on the infantry. Force them out in the open here. Massive explosions. Casualties piling up. We got them all sitting up. He got grenades up on the hill. Now the assault gunner here bleeding out. Maybe time if you able to withdraw here from the engagement. We do have the MD 34. Jeb is trying to buy time. But I honestly think that's going to be too risky. In particular, with the mortar arriving, that's going to be too risky there, I think, for Jeb. Machine and they're setting up. Mines going off, maybe. That was his plan to bait them into the mine there. I don't know. Ralph's going to be caught up the MU-34 and the Assault Grenadier. See, Jibber using the terrain here around Mount Bacon quite well against Rikli here. Forcing him to run around corners and sort of, you know, baiting them into kill zones. So in a sense, there. Sharp play by Jibber. Risky, but sharp. Thumbs up. That was really impressive play there by Jibber. Popping in one Assault Squad into the 250 half track. Can't heal without veterans one, but still they can fight from the half track without taking damage. So that allows Jibber essentially to extend the you know the shall we say value of the assault grenadiers until he gets them healed up. That's it. This assault grenadier score definitely needs for the draw here. And there you go. We do get the some events are there, and like that means the M3040 here from Jibber, so he will turn to Italian armor here versus Rikli's called in a Greyhound. And a pinch can also go for the summer event tip, but I'm guessing he wants the M1340. And probably with the steel we ability there. There we go. M1340 turn tank here. Arriving to support the 90th Panzer Grenadier we shown. Fun fact, some German divisions in Italy actually used Italian armor because they couldn't get German assault guns and tanks and instead rely on Italian tanks and assault guns instead. Fun fact. Even like some of them, those were the later models. Typically, in part, I think they were signed by the Germans for some improvements. Fun fact. 
charging in here. Another Panzer Jäger squad ready here for Jeba M1340 engaging the Greyhound here. 47mm gun versus 37mm gun. Good shot there. Falling back here, sniping in the mortar crew. Need to withdraw the assault grenadiers here. Panzer moving up. They also nerfed the M1340's performance as infantry a bit. Let's see what next with Jibber. Greyhound there spotted. Got a bit too relaxed here, Rickley, and Jibber almost took it out as a response. Also lost the cutoff point, though, thanks to a rather circuitous route that he still hasn't connected impressively enough. He still hasn't connected here. M134 moving up here. One of the mainstays of the Italian armored forces. Would, of course, upgrade it throughout the war. Fun version would be known as the M1542, which actually would feature a higher velocity version of the gun and some other small improvements. Fun fact there. Pulling back here, the tank now, Veteran G1, Greyhound setting out. Yeah, this is maintaining pretty good pressure here. Enemy forces have captured a victory point. We'll have to see what Jibber goes for next. Scout spotted, quickly pushed back there by the M1340. Panzer is pushing eastwards. Big wave of troops here out of Jibber's base. Panzer Peony, Assault Grenadiers, Panzer Jaegers. Meanwhile, Rico bring up the anti tanks, help counter the Italian armor there. Mine's going off. Greyhound there flanking, but shot misses at the M1340. Assault is moving forward here. Got Bessieri, not that he's going to use them, I imagine we got the secure location ability, which of course means units near the tank here, capture points faster. This definitely gives uh, Jebber here a more you know, offensive momentum there. In terms of growing points, tank almost done there for Rikli. And here we got Panzer versus Rav Squad. Interesting enough, he didn't go for, you know, this, you know, the one that makes the tanks and light vehicles cheaper there. He might be having some other plans. 250 half track here for Jipper. Interesting. Perhaps a motor half track. Or perhaps he intends to use his mechanized infantry there. Definitely not something I'm used to seeing there out of DAC players. Of course, been to see Jibber tag up, but we'll have to see what he actually does here. Assault gun is based on the victory point. <clears throat> it's interesting to see just assault guns become such a sudden heavy component there of DAC builds. Scouts there. Not because I think Assault Gun is bad, I actually thought they were quite good. But a lot of players just seem to like overlook them for a while. Rouse could make better for the entertainment here. Panzer is then deep trouble here. Taking heavy damage out in the open. Entertainment forts, Panzer Jaegers, or Panzer Pena moving in. And we got given the machine and lone health, but probably wants to withdraw it here. Second half track ready there for Jebba. 420 versus 427. There we go, light tank moving in, or medium tank technically moving in. Pulling back then the M1340, back at base here. Jibba remains a bit coy there. He's not really committed to anything. He could take up. He could also just go for more Italian armor, but so far Jibba... Oh, there we go, another Italian tank. Greyhound, there we go. Big push onto the hill here. Strain to mind, never the assault units taking losses. Assault goes moving forwards here. And we got the second turn taking forward here. Jibber's on the offensive, but there you go. M1 and tank is slamming into the half track. Assault gun is bail out. Could try and throw a smoke grenade to maybe save the half track, but okay, never mind. Doesn't need to. Now we're going to push forwards here. Grain being forced off Mount Bacon. We got a second anti tank on here. Jibber's assault, though, is going off a bit. Staggered here, and this makes it easier for Rickly to actually pull back here and set up uh, more lines of defense here. So, Jib, I think, holds off the assault here, withdraws, could have kept pushing, but he would risk, I think, losing tanks and infantry, which obviously would have been only to Rickly's benefit. As for Rickly, we're not seeing a lot of vehicles, so I suspect we might be seeing him going for a tank depot and then going for Sherman EC8s. We have vehicles available. 
Which would certainly would force Jibber to have to like go for something a bit bigger than M1340s. I mean, some Aventors can actually fight reasonably well versus ECs in my experience, but I don't think Jibber's going to go for some Aventors to counter those. We can also see another thing. Oh, he's going for like a lot of anti-tank guns all of a sudden. Which could certainly then force Jibber to have to further tech up, possibly for Stukas of Fuss, trying to encounter all these anti-tank guns. But it is worth noting here, Rikli is keeping the anti-tank guns somewhat far apart, so it becomes a bit harder for Jibber to just say, clear them all out. But there you go. Tank up up there for Rikli. Tank Depper up. Victory points wise, Jibber's building head here. We got the Mechanized Company. Italian tanks setting out there. The yeah, Italian tanks like to see a variety of usage across many fronts. I mean, like Italian tanks fighting in Normandy, basically in part of reconnaissance units. They would actually be using L640s there. Fun fact, you didn't see that one in Sewing Pride, Ryan. And it's modifying down death here. And even like towards the very end of the war, in fact, some of the ruins of Budapest, that would actually be M1514s that are served as part of the Waffen SS. Finding in Budapest, they're actually part of an SS cavalry division. Anyways, tank up almost down there for Rickley. Salt News there, falls back, MD34 moving forwards, Ralph Squad there could flank in, could even breach here, if he's fast enough here, but there you go, he's not going to be able to breach that, we got the massive force here moving in, Panzer Assault Gun this here, and they could even now breach the rifle inside the building here, will he go for that breach? No, he's just going to go grenades. Running out in front of them and getting away there, tanks here swinging southwards. Yeah, but clearly looking to make a swing here. Perhaps even trying to attack the base here, but I was looking to attack, through, I think, possibly through the gap here and get behind it. Instead of just attacking into the anti tank guns. So, Mechanized Company is done. Could go for the 254 as well, just for some light artillery support. Or he could again take up further. We'll have to see what Jibba does, though. There you go, M18 Hellcat on the way here, I would have expected the EC8, but at the same time, this is obviously cheaper for now. Until it gets Allied War Machine going. Grenades here right into their assault gun ears. Rather taking any damage as Panzer is flanking the Greyhound. Jeba is leading here with the 90th Panzer gun at DDV Sean. We got anti-tank guns and we got M18 Hellcats engaging the M1340. That could go down here and down it goes. That was a bit of a blow there to Jeba. He still maintains good map control, he still has a good lead, but... That does hurt. We'll have to see how Jibba responds to this. The so father though, Jibba is going for Mardis. That does make sense. Could of course go for the steel pack there to make them cheaper. Plenty of mines up here. Good spot because typically a lot of most units are trying to cross the road. So mining the road here is really good. Most players typically tend to try and, you know, not use the northern part of the beaches, so there's not really much reason to mine here, but this spot is very good mining terrain. MD Fed was rough squad here down south of the beaches. Another Panzer squad here for Jibba to probably help just counter A the Hellcat, but also the Greyhounds there. As now there's particularly well armored and that's our easy prey there for the Panzer Jaegers. Mard already as well. Oh my went off, they're wiping a rival squad! Bar dropped! Nice work by Jibba Mining. He's really just been mining all over the place. Thumbs up. That was also an interesting spot to mine there. Clearly not one that Rikli was expecting. Another mine there again. Almost wiping out a second of Rikli's rifle squads. That have been quite painful there for Rikli to suffer another wipe like that. Model 3 moving forwards here. North here, Panzer Pioneer spotting down sandbags by the Greyhound, now the Ralph Squad there for Rickley. Fanning out here with the assault gun, he's being forced, we've got the mortar there hanging a bit further back here. Panzer Pioneer's wiped, good wipe there for Rickley, denies Jib anyway, so he's on mines now. Also, that means he's got a less efficient way of repairing stuff. The guard here, Tillery Cover selected for Jibber, instead of uh, the other one, interesting choice there. Coming in, Jibber's got bigger plans to spam in that, but also, Artillery Cover, of course, when he's got a lot of munitions is... Pretty good. He also, of course, got Force Recon. Selected there for Jebba. Smoke off. Grenades being chucked here. A lot of grenades being chucked back. 
Greyhounds, Hellcats moving in. There's always been forced back. Jeb, I think he's pushing Shalak too far here. Jing Sing retreat path. This could easily backfire on him now with the ground here. Yeah, I think this is tactically mistake now by Jeb. Oh, he's calling out Tluic cover here. That said, unless he maintains line of sight, you know, it's gonna not do too much for him here. And he's going to lose loose in the assault gun, you see. Yeah. Not entirely sure that was the best move there by Jeb. Oh, maybe, maybe it was. He just got both into tank guns. Holy smokes! Like, he works with this. We'd like to try and destroy them right now. Which obviously would really put Ridley in a bad place, but it looks like Jibber is not aware that he got both of the entertainers wiped here. This is obviously good for Ridley that Jibber's not aware of the low cause now. Yes, he's at least going to be wreck one of the entertainers there. Got it! Yeah, but they're really applying high pressure to Rikli. Panzerjägers are doing that part for the Fatherland here, but they are Panzerbüchse. Southern Victor fuel point is seized, but the scouts good move here, but Rikli maintaining sort of more wider perspective on the battlefield here, and pushing for more broader map control against Jeb, who's more like, you know, these sort of spearhead punches looking to like, you know, hit soft, flash, and inflict maximum, you know, pain and damage. Yeah, but though I feel like still could consider taking up here. Something a bit more on the medium armor scale of things that is an Italian, I think, would do Jibo a bit of good here versus Rikli. So now that armor reserves has been made a bit more affordable. They're calling in a pair of Stooks could for be really good there for Jibo. And the Panther 4 call in. Just my thoughts, anyways. Okay, we got support elements that probably means to do these. Maybe a recovery half track. Not that expected here. Assault explosion down in the main road. Ralph's caught there, trying his best to hold up the assault here. Grenades being chucked. Ultimately, didn't do too much there. Mine's exploding here. Something else exploding. Support elements are done. Up here, Ralph's caught hitting a mine. And there you go, Mortar Chris being assaulted here. Cat and taking a lot of damage. Jabba keeps up the assault here. Stoop D's now available here for Jebba. Though again, honestly, I think some events kind of make would make more sense here. A bit more use of his light vehicles and of course can provide artillery support. We have lost control over honestly, I think some inventors would actually beat Stoop D's in this situation. And I think she's still trying to take up. But again, that's just me. Not saying the Stoop D is bad, but I can't help but wonder if the some inventor might just provide Jebba with a bit more of an edge case scenario advantage. Meanwhile, though, Rigley, they're pushing for the Sherman East hit, which, of course, with War Machine becomes very cheap. We're talking 330 manpower and 110 fuel for that. That's dirt cheap. Which is one of the reasons I was a bit concerned about this, is like, you know, that means the benefits from this and this, and even, like, the Pos Veterans 1 ability if you hadn't gone for this or near C, meaning you can really get a lot of advantages on your EC-8 with that. Which is kind of bonkers. Which... Comparatively with Mechanized, the Panther doesn't really have any of those kind of benefits from the battle group. But there goes all this pushback, easy hit rushing in, backed up with the ground here. Dashing forwards for democracy, and there we go, we got a bit of a boost there, I think, from the Greyhound there for the EC-8. Got the same event of the M1340, we got the Stug moving in here, modern reserve. Of course, the bigger problem now for Jeb is, of course, Rick can just start churning out those easy eights now. He's going for more Panzerjägers. I guess, but I can't help but feel this involves a few other risks there for Jibber. And in this stage, again, I feel like he wants to take up for something a bit bigger, but that might just be. Panzerjägers in the south, there's the captain. Captain moving up. Panzerjägers galore there being forced back. And here the Panzerjägers in trouble with the captain. Moving forwards again here. Mortifying rain down here. We got the Stug moving in. Marder moving up here to make the main road push. South side, Captain forcing back another Panzerjäger squad here. You can see Jibber's got a bit of hesitancy here. Not entirely sure he wants to like, meet them head on or try and you know catch them on the move. I think he's sort of aiming more towards catching the move than trying to attack into that, which honestly makes sense. Half tanks at this point are just providing healing here in his base. Another easy there for Rikli. 
at this point the democracy train is very well underway. That I think is going to give uh, Gibber there a bit of a headache. So straight for the cutter pond. Mine that laid down here ahead of time catches some of the riflemen slowing down in advance, allowing the Stuke to move up past the Italian tank. Soldiers moving from the north, but they exposed it to Greyhound and he's hit fire. Smoke is being deployed here. Tank moving from another side here. Looks like Gibber's going for a broader push here against Rickley. Bold, but. Again, I can't help but feel like something, you know, for a bit of extra push here. Oh, grenades here as well. Rickley's being slowly forced off, but it's coming a bit of cost. Meanwhile, it's Germany's hit flanking, catching the martyr here. And note the usage of the H trap rounds here for increased damage and penetration. Thumbs up. Good play there by Rickley. Guard talks from the house, he's hitting from the north. Panzer is being blasted by the Sherman, he's hit. Brad Pitt does not rest. As for Jibber's base, we're seeing another martyr on the way there. Train to the e M1340 and the Panzer is there. A lot of shots plinking against the Sherman EC8 here. Second EC8 probing in the south. And far south, we've got a Panzer squad going for deep flank around Rakeley here. Second martyr almost done for Jibber. Of course, one problem for Jibber right now is again, he does lack Panzer Pioneers. It's going to be a rather slow process trying to pair that with Assault Grenadiers. We can sort of see things are starting to get slightly more awkward here for Jibber. Slightly more awkward. Now he has to commit more and more than a frontline troop to repairing the martyr. Just to get repaired at like a half decent pace. So in that sense, Gibber's force is starting to show slightly more and more increased inefficiencies as the match goes on. Whereas Rickley, of course, in a sense, is just kind of getting more and more efficient in comparison. Salt is dashing across the southern beach sands here. Ralph Squad capturing to the cutoff point. Catching the Ralph Squad force in the back. Smoke being deployed here to minimize fire there from the EC8. Marder moving into support here. EC8 pushing into the north side here. We got Marder's Panzer there trying to push Brent Rickley from moving in here. Marder turning around here. Brighton capturing forwards. EC8 taking immense damage from the two Marders. Salt is going in here. Possible looking to flank. We got the Greyhound screening against such a flank. Thumbs up to Rickley here. The martyrs are quick to push it back. Jebba, though, is really struggling. He's being pushed more and more to the defensive, which is making it hard for him to use his forces the way he clearly wants to. Another EC8 there for Rikli. Reinforcing healing. And go one out because again with fast deploy they get up very fast they made it one command point but they didn't you know reduce the production time bonus which i think is what they really needed to do as well so jibba is really starting to get the lack of panzer panis the lack of like you know anything heavier here it's really a stick stone to uh like Jibber's posterior bit. I mean, at this point, like, it might even be worthwhile again with the Panzer I mean, Commander to at least just, you know, have the Flak 36 up. But even, like, you know, again, Stug 3Gs or Panzer Force or something that could have done, I think, Jibber a bit of good here as well. Blasting building C, back two points wise, Rick is slowly beating up Jibber. We got the weapon support center for Rickley. Clearly wants to remove like an observation point and just a hard point here that can frustrate Gibber's movements here across the beaches. Gibber's in the offensive, but it also clearly means he can't, you know, Rickley can't observe from a P and fire down on Gibber safely. That obviously also indicates Rickley that he's paying attention that Gibber's intense, like, you know, focus on the southern beaches. So Rickley could actually use that against Gibber if he wants to. What is going on here? I think he's trying to destroy the Greyhound to free up population. Over that, sending into Jibber there. Because if he sends it into Jibber, Jibber could technically, like, you know, get free experience off of it. So obviously he doesn't want that to happen. The 
It certainly does look a bit strange, thing. So there you go, he wrecked his own Greyhound. In a very cruel and cynical display there. Hey guys, I only said Ikrin on Friendly Union as a joke, guys! It was a joke! It was a joke! Anyways. Of course, the assault gun is here. Got the silent fuel point here again. At this point, he's mostly doing it to deny his opponent fuel. They're needing it because, again, he's got like 400 fuel, but Jabba's strategy just doesn't rely on fuel at the moment. But he probably should be using a bit more fuel and strategy, to be honest. Tully's being called in, pushing in hard here. Tully firing down in these positions. Anti tank and gone here. Decent push by Jebba, but ultimately didn't do, I think, enough damage here to Rick for it to really be worthwhile. In fact, now Rick is going to just turn this around against Jebba here with Seek and Destroy. On the offensive, tank going in and catching the flank, but there you go. All the tanks for Seek and Destroy, they just deploy massive amounts of firepower. In fact, Jebba here further spread out his forces, meaning, you know, this armored assault train, this thunder run out of uh, Rick, he just, you know, dashes right through Jebba's forces here, like a hot knife through battle like just Jibba was in as absolutely a poor position to receive this as he could have been. Like that was a strange move by the way actually just pulling up his forces like that. And now Jibba's done just two assault gun escorts and four panzer escorts. Everything else Jibba has is gone. That was a massive tactical miscalculation there by Jibba. Like, he just made a successful push and then proceeds to just leave himself as vulnerable as possible to counterattack as he almost could. Like, the only way he could have made that even easier for Rickley if he had all the tank destroyers pointing in the wrong direction. A victory point is being taken from us! Panzer is moving up here. Flashing forward to the Panzer the Rick Jibba's infantry is heavily damaged. And Rick, in comparison, well, didn't really lose a lot during that push. And he still has, like, a lot of tanks. And he still has a fair amount of bad infantry up as well here. So the Panzerjägers are very much going to struggle. Are these hitmen from the north here? The units are getting wiped here. So many Panzer Escorts are getting wiped here. Proximity alarm, we are a victory point. Our life support company has the same damage. And Jibber's not really doing a lot here. He's still reinforcing, he's still sort of acting here, but at this point it kind of feels like he's just wasting time, so let's just call it GG here. So there you go. Big back and forth battle here with some nasty moves from both sides. But then Jebba's strategy, I feel like just kind of ran short. It seems like just lack a further clue as to where it wanted to go. And so he just sort of like, you know, kept like, you know, hanging about there. But without really going in a particular direction. Then of course, that was further compounded by him being just making a good push. And then just completely wasting it. And more crucially, leaving himself open to a big counterattack there out of Rigley. So again, I think Jebba should have leveraged tech more here versus Rigley when he was ahead. Or at least considers maybe some some events or something else more mines again also along here would be great and again that was like also the big question where why didn't he replace his panzer panis because again more mines here versus Rigley, i think really would have helped him like they were crucial and level like several early cases and he just didn't you know get any more so there you go the hope you enjoyed this match or learned something from it if you did subscribe like share comment as always you can support the public house by donating your patreon patron every bit helps me keep making all these videos so thank you all for joining in and see you all tomorrow for another episode bye everyone